Totilus is by far one of the most well-known dressage horse of his generation, and love him or his story, his record-breaking performances are well-known. But his legacy in the breeding department is mixed, and we shall see why. Now, I'm not here to look at Totila's training, ownership saga, or to rehash anything that has already been covered many times before by others. I want to talk about Totila's as a breeding stallion, and to share his heritage as well as what he is known for passing on. First of all, it's impossible to talk about Totila's from a breeding perspective without talking first about the other black stallion ridden by Edward Gall to Grand Prix, his sire Gribaldi. Born in 1993, this Trakaner stallion was the two-year-old Trakaner champion at his licensing when he was bought by Dutch warmblood breeders intent on bringing in the refinement and the energy to the Dutch warmblood stock. As we have seen in previous videos, notably the one on Morricone, this regular injection of Trakaner blood to refine a heavier mare base often yields very good results. This is because with their closed books allowing only thoroughbred and Arabs, the Trakaner have remained the most refined and light of the warmblood breeds. So Gribaldi was brought as a young stallion, put through the approval process of the KWPN, or the Dutch Warmblood Registry, if you want, and entered dressage training. You see, Dutch breeders generally want their stallion performing as a true test of their mettle, so to speak. They're not entirely satisfied with stallion having only passed the inspection and the read and test requirement for approval. And Gribaldi did exactly that. Under the saddle of Edward Gall, he reached Grand Prix level, and as a well-marketed breeding stallion, he not only got good result in competitive ring, but he proved to be a good improvement sire and very popular. He currently has about 3,000 registered offspring to his name in a variety of stud books. He is still available today with the ICSI technology. Over the years, Ribaldi proved overall to be an excellent producer of not only Dutch dressage horses, but also of Trakaner. He was in fact declared elite by the Trakaner Studbook in 2003, based on the quality of his offspring, and he was eventually crowned Stallion of the Year in 2008, I believe. However, when the Schrell decided to use him under Mayor Lomika, Gribaldi was only six years old and coming into his own as a dressage horse. But Lominka had already had two foals by Trakaner stallions, one by Balflug and the other by Partout. Clearly, there was a desire to combine the traditional Dutch jumping line that she carried with Nimardor and Actor in her pedigree with the influence of the Trakaner. What I'm saying here is that Totilas was not a one-off cross in this case. He was born in 2000, and Lominka was put right back in full to Gribaldi, presumably because the young Totilas must have looked impressive enough at birth to justify a repeat breeding. Lominka would go on to have five more foals by Gribaldi after Totilas. Interestingly, she changed hands late in her broodmare career and went to Mount St. John, where she had three embryo transfer foals, all of them born in 2013, two by first Heinrich and one by four Romance. So, Totilas has quite a few full and half siblings, none of them coming even close to his success in dressage, however. Gribaldi was well set to become a really influential sire in 2010 when he winded down his career in the dressage ring and headed to full time stud duty. I mean, he had been breeding while competing and he had achieved pretty much everything that he could in the dressage arena, so it was time to focus more on his breeding career. He had competed at Grand Prix for many years and retired sound at 17 years old, at which point, yeah, he went to Germany for what was to be a brief publicity tour arranged by Paul Schockemulli. This stay in Germany was to allow the German breeders to see him in person. Sadly, shortly after arriving, he collapsed and died of a ruptured aneurysm. Ironically, he died the same year Totilas became available for breeding in a weird and tragic kind of handover, a passing of the torch of this more to his most accomplished sons, or that's the way it seemed at the time. Totilas followed a very different trajectory to stud than his sire. For one thing, his breeder chose not to send him to early stud book approval, as it's generally done with promising young stallion, opting instead to keep him in training with his first rider, Yishka van den Akers, who showed him at the Pavel Cup in 2004 and the following year at the World Young Horse Championship, where he came in fifth. Clearly, he was good. 
very good from the start, if not spectacular in the same way he would become later in more advanced work. Something worth keeping in mind. A year later, he sold to Sush Weiser and started his partnership with Edward Gall that would take him all the way to the top. He was presented, licensed, and approved quite late in 2009-2010 at the age of, well, nine years old, by Hanover and Oldenburg, and eventually, yes, the KWPN also accepted him in their books. His first year offered at Studs was 2010, right after he changed ownership. Now, let's talk a little bit about the circus around his first breeding year, when he was supposedly limited to 250 breeding of only the highest quality mares. Well, as breeders soon discovered, this was not the case. Almost all mares that applied were approved, and with a stud fee of 5,500 euro, he did not breed 250 mares. The following year, after his sale to Paul Schockemuller, who was still disappointed he had not been able to stand Gribaldi because of his premature death, and who clearly saw Totilas as the right successor to his sire, he moved to Germany. Paul Schockemuller set his stud fee at an unheard of 8,000 euro, where it stayed for a few years as Totilas continued to compete with mixed success interrupted by injuries. He finally retired from sport in 2015. Initially, probably a bit suppressed by his high stud fee, his number of registered offspring hovered around 50 to 70 per year or so, but when his stud fee eventually dropped, the number of offspring jumped to between 70 and 100 depending on the year. Since he died in 2020 from complication of colic, he only was at stud for a total of 10 years and he has sized just under a thousand fold to this day. That is not a lot of falls from such a high-profile stallion, and for sure, his high stud fee has something to do with it. But, to be honest, he also was not a fall maker. Now, what do we mean when we say a stallion is or is not a fall maker? Well, some stallions produce fall that, from an early age, show their quality. They have the neck, the look, the presence. They trot and canter in an uphill and balanced way right from the start, and they hint at how they will move in the future. It's interesting, actually, going back and reading comment on horse form from when Tortilla's first full crop hit, a lot of people commented on how similar to their sire they looked. I assume a good proportion of them might not have ever looked at full very closely before, but hey, these were special. They were Tortilla's full. Like I say, it's interesting. Yet, objective evaluation by trained inspector tell a different story. And in the case of Totilas, his foals were certainly not uniformly impressive, and not all breeders were enthused. Maybe the expectation were set a little bit too high with such a highly visible stallion. Perhaps that's what it was. I saw a few of his foals over the years, and to be honest, I agree. Some looked good, for sure. Not spectacular, but a lot of them were underwhelming. It's often a question of maturity. It's not that they were badly conformed, let's be clear, but they lacked presence. They didn't look balanced in their body. Their movement was okay, maybe a little bit flat even, unless they were at a very good moving mare. In fact, they often looked a lot like their dam. Some really nice foal fetch good price, notably the colt Toll Recall, right? He sold for 200,000 euro. But to be clear, he was out of a spectacular mare. Anyway, he matured well, as you can see. So at first, the foals, they didn't look spectacular, and as youngster, they mostly sold on the hype of Totilas himself. But breeders took note and quickly realized that he was not stamping his foal very strongly. Dressage training had developed him into a striking horse for sure, but if he was not passing on his physical look, expression, mechanics, it became a little bit of a gamble to breed to him. And let's not forget that his stud fee was still sky high. It's a bit hard for breeder to see how they could get a return on that investment with less than spectacular looking foals. But let's look at what we mean when we say he was not really passing on any type consistently, that he was not stamping. As breeder, we always look at breeding value for the general confirmation of the horse to see if there's any particular trend in what a stallion produces. We want to make sure that the strength or the weakness will complement the mare that we choose for them. Now, those value that you see on screen now are based on the evaluation done of his progeny, foals that were inspected. Now, when you look at it, anything in the middle or around the value of 100 means that the stallion produces 
in an average way. But anything out of the shaded area indicate that the stallion passes on that particular characteristic strongly and more dependently, meaning very often. So, other than the following three things that appear to statistically be a bit more consistent, his square frame, his uphill build, and his short, thick neck, looking at his breeding value collected by Oldenburg, Hanoverian, and KWPN, they all pretty much agree on this. His values are low to average, and the rest is very inconsistent. But he does have good values for his good carrying gait mechanics at the trot and at the canter, and also he seems to give a good walk. Well, above average, anyway. The most commonly asked question was often, ah, yes, Totila's impressive horse, what type of mare does he cross best with? And there was no clear answer to that because he was so unpredictable in what he passed on. He could produce tall or short, heavy or more refined. Some were sickle hawk, other a little bit straight. Some towed in, some towed out. Some got his head, others got their dams. In terms of type, it was all over the place. Now, there seem to be two type of breeders. Those that want a stallion and a mare well suited to each other, complementing strength and weaknesses and what they pass on to their offspring while the other type take the approach of pairing two good horses and letting genetic do its thing. The second type were more willing to gamble on Totilas. Of course, of those in this second category willing to, you know, take a gamble on him because he was a good animal, there was an even smaller subset willing to gamble the full stud fee on such uncertainty. But despite all of this, his good sons certainly were favored by the breeding committees, and he has 50 licensed sons, a similar number as his sire Gribaldi, that I will remind you had three times the number of offspring. Part of this might have been the pressure to approve some of his sons while he was still very much in the public eye, without being too cynical. I mean, there is certainly bias in the selection process. Interestingly, while Totila certainly produced plenty of chestnut horses, almost all of his approved sons are dark bay or black. Keeping in mind that not all licensed stallion make it to approval, he has 28 approved with the Hanoverian and Oldenburg combined, mostly from S-line, uh, more specifically Sir Donner Hall daughters, while the Dutch approved six of his sons from a variety of mare, daughters of Pharaoh, Jazz, De Niro, and his sons. As we can see, even across his approved sons, there is not a very consistent type to them. As always, I want to take a few seconds just to thank my Patreon and to thank them for their support. By the way, one of my Patreon asked me to do a video reviewing Totila. So that's one of the perks of um, being on Patreon is that you can request some topics and uh, I will look into them. Back to the story. It took many years before the quality of his production started to become more obvious. As his colt and fillies left basic training behind and entered the more advanced and more demanding training where their trainability and capacity for collected work were put to the test, and he suddenly started to get some recognition as perhaps passing on something more intangible than just the desired phenotype expected of modern dressage horses. The older his offspring got, the better they looked. They really started to shine at the higher level, and suddenly, it seems that there were a lot of very good dressage horse by Totilas. But by then, he was gone, out of the breeder's mind, only available by frozen semen, and for a while there was even some lawsuit around who was entitled to distribute what was left of it. Breeders started to look to his sons, of course. But were they any better, any more consistent at producing than he was? Meaning, are his sons' breeding value any better, more reliable than his? Let's take a look. Toto Jr., out of a Desperado mare, so the Nero line, has very similar value as Totila's, including passing on that uphill build, square body type, and short neck. But he's the more popular one with the Dutch breeder. He has an average uh, breeding value for dressage at 104. Governor, by a jazz daughter, seems to pass on slightly better build, but the leg value are not as good. He's also quite popular and has a good dressage breeding value of 124. Blue Horn Nordic, also out of a jazz daughter, is again an average type producer with the same tendency to produce shorter neck, for example. 
total U.S. out of a Sir Donner Hall daughter, not as good as his sire, with poor score in the hind limb and lower overall movement. Trafalgar, out of a Lord Locksley Dan, same, but again, lower score for the movement he passes on. Top Gear, out of a Don Frederico Dan, similar value, less knee action in the trot, and also passes an okay walk. Total Hope, out of a Don Shufro daughter, offers a very good walk, strong value for the trot, and similar for the canter. Confirmation is average again, but tends to pass on a bit of a heavier frame, more consistently, probably from the influence of Don Shufro coming through. Total McLaren, out of a De Niro daughter, is also a very average producer overall, similar to his sire. Toligro, out of a crack sea mare, also quite average in his breeding value again. The square body type, the uphill build is there, but with more of an average movement score than what his sire passed on. Finally, there is Gaudi, out of a De Niro daughter. While he doesn't have the same kind of collected information about his offspring since he stands in North America, information is just not collected the same way, but I would say that he is a full maker in the same way that Totilas was not. They do take a lot from their dam, but they look good, and they're well-developed right from the start. They have good temperament and generally seem to get the movement from their dam. From what I've seen and discussed with other breeders, he can generally pass on a slightly longer frame, something that is not common with the other sons since they generally make them more squarish, more compact. He also can be quite inconsistent in terms of the size that he throws, just like his sire. There is no consistent evaluation of their gates as adult that is available, so... I can't say either way if he passes on better gates. The one I bred was actually a carbon copy of her dam. So what does this say about Totilas as a breeding stallion? It seems to show that not everything can be read in the breeding value or confirmation and type, and that the quality of a stallion's production is not always a sure thing either if it's only based on his performance alone. He now seems to overwhelmingly make horses with potential for the upper level, even if they do come in all shape and size. His frozen semen is still available for those maybe with good quality mares, mares with perhaps longer line, elegant neck, or not. I mean, his type served them very well. Maybe you don't want to change that. Certainly mares needing trainability, flexibility, a more willing temperament, and more of an uphill build and carrying power in the hind would probably be a good match. What remains to be seen is if his sons will have the same ability to pass on this very special willing mind and ability for the upper level, and in that way secure Totila's place amongst the big name, perhaps even starting his own T line.